All right, you guys, uh, here's our third handout for our review for our final. So like always, we start off with a couple of proofs. So I don't know, do we have just one on this one? I think we did. I, I forget. So we'll see. Anyways, let's go ahead and put the given down. I had a student ask me today, do I have to put the given down? I said, only if you want points for it. So anyways, there's the given uh, equation. And then we'll go ahead and distribute that 3 through. So 3 times 7x is 21x. 3 times negative 9 is negative 27. Okay. Now we'll combine like terms. Okay. So we can say simplifying, simplifying or combining like terms. Um, okay, and then we'll add 27 to both sides. Negative 15 plus 27 is 12, and then divide by 2, we get 6. Okay, all right. Well, I guess we did have two proofs on that. Okay, I made a mistake on this one right here, you guys. It's on the next one, uh, number 4. We only have one proof. Um, this shouldn't say TQ. It should say TP. So if you didn't get that fixed, change that to TP right there, okay? Now I'm going to put both these givens down in the first statement. And so, so QP is congruent to TP. So QP is congruent to TP. So I put one dash right there, and then I put two dashes right there. All right, I had a student today say angle P is congruent to angle P. I can't say angle P here because there's more than one angle right here. So I'm going to say angle QPR is congruent to TPS by vertical angles. Okay, so notice I marked it right there. So now I can see these triangles are congruent by side angle side. So those triangles side angle side then our proof statement is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent okay nice easy one i hope okay so find the missing side length so this was geometric mean this came out of module 17.4 so when we had a uh, a right triangle and this hypotenuse extended to the i'm sorry this altitude extended to the hypotenuse of this right triangle it gave us three geometric means it gave us this altitude was geometric mean so bottom left top right and both of these legs a and b went into bottom left top right for geometric mean okay so the altitude is the geometric mean between the pieces of the hypotenuse it splits up so x and y each leg of the of the uh, right triangle is also a geometric mean between the whole hypotenuse the whole hypotenuse is c and the piece that the leg touches this leg touches this little piece so i'm going to put x right there and this leg touches this little piece, so I'm going to put Y right there. So depending on what they give you, you can set up these three different proportions and cross multiply and solve. Okay, so here, this is the geometric mean between both pieces of the hypotenuse. So I know 9 goes in 1. What's this length right here? We need to get this length right here, so it's going to be 16. So it goes in the other one right there. And then cross multiply, square root, we get X equals 12. Okay, over here, this is the geometric mean. So bottom left, top right okay between the the whole hypotenuse so 9 plus X and the piece that it touches so 9 okay all right and then cross multiply and then you're going to distribute through and subtract and divide and you get 16 on that one okay I knew it was 16 because over here 9 times 16 is 144 Okay. All right, so this one's the geometric mean, bottom left, top right, between the whole hypotenuse and the piece that it touches, okay? So those go in that position right there, okay? Cross multiply and divide, we get x equals 100, okay? X is the geometric mean, bottom left, top right, between the whole hypotenuse and the piece that it touches. So cross multiply, square root, and you get 15, okay? All right, so whoops, I made a mistake. There shouldn't be a square root right here. This shouldn't be here. This should be just uh, 5 times 3 right there, okay? So sorry about that. So 5 times 3 is 15 because the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 9 is 3 right there, okay? Or you can multiply and get 225 and get the square root of that is 15. I'm just trying to show you without a calculator. All right, find the missing side lengths. Um, uh, leave answers in simple radical form, okay? Actually, that, these directions don't fit this problem right here. Um, uh, these directions should say find the ratio. I don't have my hand out in front of me, so I can't tell if I have the wrong thing. So find the ratio. The ratio of the 
tangent of z. So this is Sakatoa. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of z is 21 over 28. This is the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is for sine and cosine. Okay, so 21 over 28 reduces to 3 fourths. Okay, find uh, the ratio of the sine of c. That's what this should say. Find the ratio. Again, I don't have it in front of me, so I, I don't know. Anyways, um, so if, it's, if that's what it says, I made a mistake on that. So the sine of C is um, opposite over hypotenuse, so 24 over 32, and then 8 goes into those 3 and 4 times, okay? All right, so here, find the missing side. This is appropriate direction. So we got to figure out, is it sine, cosine, or tangent? Okay, here's the angle. This is the hypotenuse, so it's not sine, it's not cosine. This one's tangent ratio. So the tangent of 41 equals opposite over hypotenuse. So get the tangent of 41. And then what I like to do is cross multiply. And then so you divide and you get 4.6. Okay, it said round it to the nearest tenth. Okay, this one is adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent hypotenuse cosine. Okay, so the cosine and then get the, the decimal, cross multiply, and you get about 20.0. Don't leave it just 20. It says round to the nearest tenth. So there's the nearest tenth right there. Okay. All right. Okay, so same with this one. So this one is um, opposite hypotenuse. Opposite hypotenuse is sine. Okay, so the sine. Okay, and the sine of 37 cross multiply, you get 6.2. This one is, this one doesn't isn't using the hypotenuse, so it's tangent. So opposite over adjacent. The tangent of 50.1 is opposite over adjacent. Okay, get the tangent, cross multiply, 6.0. All right, so these are 30, 60, 90 triangles. So these are special right triangles. So for module 18.3, you guys, special right triangles. If it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, these two sides are the same, and the hypotenuse is root 2 times whatever that is. If it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the shorter leg is x, the longer leg is x root 3. I like to tell my students the 30 had a root 3 baby, so right neck underneath the 30 is the root 3. And the hypotenuse is always twice that right there, okay? So here we go. So if that's 5, this is 5 root 3, and that's 2 times 5, or 10. Okay, if this is 6 root 3, then this is 6 root 3 root 3, and this is 2 times 6 root 3. Okay, so six root, so 2 times 6 root 3 is 12 root 3, and 6 root 3 root 3 becomes 6 times 3, or 18. All right, so 45, 45, 90s, if this is 5, that's 5, that's 5 root 2. Okay, if this is 10 root 2, that's 10 root 2, and that's 10 root 2 root 2. Okay, and root 2 root 2 is 2, so 10 times 2 is 20. All right, so here, this says find the measure of the indicated angle. So more Sakatoa right here. So this one is adjacent hypotenuse cosine. So the cosine of whatever angle that is is adjacent over hypotenuse. So punch in your calculator, 12 divided by 13, and to find the angle, we got to hit uh, shift cosine or second function cosine, depending on your calculator. So that angle is shift cosine. This says inverse cosine of the decimal of 12. 13 okay over here tangent is opposite over adjacent so this angle is shift tangent of opposite over adjacent okay so over here when we do a uh, shift cosine of 12 13 we get 22.61986 round it to the nearest degree so this is going to go to 23 degrees okay all right so when I hit shift tangent of 4 13 I get um, 17 point uh, whoops point uh, I went, went, got a little too crazy right there 17 point, uh, uh, too many decimals in there anyways. So it's going to round us to uh, 17 degrees. I think it's 17.1 something. I think it's that, you guys. So I think, But anyways, it's 17 degrees right there, okay? So this angle closest is uh, 17 degrees. Let me get rid of this decimal right there, okay? All right, uh, so here we go. So we're f still finding the angle. Okay, this one right here, you guys, this is an isosceles triangle. Well, if it's an isosceles triangle, this angle equals this angle. So this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So I already know it's 45. I don't have to do any kind of shift cosine tangent or whatever. This would be a tangent, by the way. The tangent of that angle is 3 over 3. 
which is 1. And so if you hit shift tangent of 1, you'd find out it's 45 degrees. Okay, this one is adjacent hypotenuse, so cosine. So the cosine of that angle is 4.4 over the hypotenuse. So the angle is shift cosine of 4.4. So punch in your calculator, 4.4 divided by 11, hit equals, and then hit shift tangent of whatever decimal that is, and it's going to get us about 66 degrees on that, okay? All right, so find the missing side lengths, leave answers as radicals, and simplest form, this is Pythagorean theorem, okay? So a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the hypotenuse squared, okay? 25 plus 4 is 29, and we get the square root of 29 is our answer. That's the answer that they want. Do not put 5 point something, okay? All right, let this be x. If you don't see a p triple happening here, this is a p triple right here, okay? It's a 3, 4, 5 p triple times 2, but we'll crank it out. I'll show you in just a second. So let that be x, subtract, and then you get 6 right there. This is um, 3 times 2. This is 4 times 2. This is 5 times 2. A 3, 4, 5 p triple. That's 6, okay? Now, if you don't know your p triples, that's okay. It just takes you a little bit longer to use your Pythagorean theorem. Okay, this one says find the values of the variables. So we need to find x and then find y. Okay, so here's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So whatever side this is, this is root 2 times this. So this is going to be 9 root 3 root 2, which is in multiply 3 times 2 is 9 root 6. Okay, now 30 is right there, and the 30 had a root 3 baby. So there's a root 3 hiding in this 9 root 6. So to get the shorter leg, we go backwards and divide by root 3. Okay, so we can divide these guys since they're both inside the radical. This goes this cancels out to 2, so it's 9 root 2. All right, so that's what x is, 9 root 2. Okay, and then y is double that. y is twice that, so when you multiply that by 2, we get 18 root 2. Okay, you guys, take care. Have a nice weekend.